Hi and welcome, I'm Tommy Holst and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Release Edition. This format is part of Instagram blog Drop and you can find us under at DropMegaOfficial. We do reviews, news and interviews that all have to do with the film business. We will cover the second batch of the SDCC related releases that are over 30 prints and after that we will have a chat with Oliver Barrett about his very creative The Dark Knight print he did for Mondo. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at DropMicroFficial to follow along with the art we are talking about or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So for the beginning I brought you a little treat. We had him on before, he did before some really great stuff. It is Lyndon Willoughby who came up with the Power Up series and um, it had there's different names. This one is the Super Mario Brothers of course as you can see here. Uh, there's also a variant for that release. Um, in this kind of, uh, I think it's a, it's also a foil print. I think I know it's a foil print. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, check the back there, as you can see here. The, it's probably gonna look really great with the foil on it and the contrast, especially with the red colors. And um, the other ones that fall next are also very great and also part of uh, the series of the Power Up series by Linda Will Willoughby who did a really great job, as I said, on it and bottleneck released it again. Both are 16 by 24. There's a on the regular variant, which are the, the colorful ones. There are like this edition of uh, 200 and the variant ones. There's edition of 80. And yeah, this is, uh, as you can see, Super Mario Brothers 3. And then we have two more in the back here both are like i mean i think all of them are really great this is the super mario world from 1990 um for the was it the super nes i think it is and yeah it looks really amazing with all like the little details to like the the the, the buttons on the on the game pad and um uh, and then you have super mario here and like his like little pipes he goes down so really cool and then Obviously, cannot forget the classic when it comes to Mario, Super Mario 64. Great game. Also played it at least a of uh, like when I went to uh, friends' houses uh, and like and stuff like that. They they had the console. I always had like the PC gaming, but really really enjoyed this one. Cool cool game. Uh, the variant also really cool looking. I mean, Linda Willoughby knocked it out of the park again, and you cannot even begin to say where uh which other movie games he's going to tackle and uh, i'm really excited so uh linden let me know and you need to come on the podcast <laughs> hope you heard me here buddy okay so this this is it basically for a bottle like this uh this week and or this release edition um they had they had a big week last week and now it's time for some other galleries that came up with really cool stuff and but a co-collaborator with bottleneck is vice press news and they came up with a very cool wallace and gromit um like mini show you could even say and this first one is by george bletzis i didn't know his art before and it's a lithograph it's 50 centimeters by 70 centimeters and it's edition of 165. Very cool print if you're into Wallace and Gromit. Not that big of a Wallace and Gromit fan, but you can see all the little details. It's called Over the Years as well. So um, I, I, I see, I, I think you get the gist here uh, how the print happened. But really cool idea, really, really liked it. And then there's uh, something by Flory. He did uh, also for Vice Press, obviously, and he did this mini series which is an open edition it's eight by eight inch and uh it ships internationally i think i'm not sure though but uh i guess because the the new stuff ships internationally as well and you have here walls and gromit and this like cool little robot i have no clue what it is but maybe you can let me know in the comments so uh everybody knows what exactly the robot resembles but good thing that it's a small print that's like you know as I always say um it's hard to find cool small prints and i th i think if you're a walls and gromit fan this can go anywhere in uh, in, in, a, in your child's room or um in your kitchen or whatever so very cool opportunities here to put those tiny prints in and have some cool art everywhere in the house and, but we're not done with this series. There's also another one. It's also, oh, by the way, this, this those are G-Clay prints. Forgot about to say that. And there's another one here. 
it is just called basically Wallace and uh, basic Wallace and Gromit. It's by Arno Kiss and uh, it's a lithograph print, also 50 by 70 centimeters, and an edition of 150. I really like the color work here and um, the kind of style is really cool. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, for Wallace and Gromit fans also must have. But to round it up with another open edition which I think is my favorite in that regard. And it's by uh, the great Andy Fairhurst. He's been on before. And uh, thank you, Andy, for coming on. And uh, I hope it's not going to be the last time. And he did this Walls and Gromit, a close shave. I think it's one of the episodes that, or, uh, that is really um, loved by the fans out there. And it's uh, an archival ink print. Uh, I, it didn't say if it's lithograph or a gicle or something like that, but I bet it's... Or not bad, but I think it's a G clay in this regard. And it's A3 in size, which would be 11.7 inches times 16.5 inches. And this is also an open edition, so um, get it while you have the chance. Um, there's there's going to be some time that this print will be online. But yeah, any first did a really cool job. I really like that it's... Um, that is also this hall has the building there, and because I like archi I like architecture in my prints a lot, and uh, yeah, it gets the spirit of Walls and Cromit uh, like in in this regard. So um, yeah, let me let me know how it looks in person. I'm interested about that. So uh, feel free to comment and um, yeah, let me know or post some pictures so I can see what it looks like at least um, more than just a digital file in that regard. And there's even more from Vice Press. They also had some cool stuff going on. And um, this is a series of the, the oh, no, just Thunderbirds. And uh, I watched it like back in the day when I was really young. And this series is by Rodrigo uh, uh, Barraza. And um, they uh, or this, uh, this uh, the person did um, like it's, it's an in action. It's called the series and it has on the top left corner there, the Thunderbird 1, then there comes the Thunderbird 2, and the um, front, uh, I think it's the Angel, uh, like, that's it, what's it called? I think, yeah, it's a, uh, it's the, never mind, it's a, the, the Thunderbird uh, from the front, Thunderbird 2 from the front, and then there is the Interceptor as well. And yeah, those are some really cool prints. I mean, if you like this kind of like aircraft and like cars and like vehicle kind of stuff, um, I think it's definitely must have in that regard. And especially if you're a Thunderbirds fan, those are all G clay prints, all also A3 in size. So that makes it 11.7 inches and 16.5 inches. And it's an addition each of 200. And um, even more on top of that, there is a Captain Scarlet set, which I did not even knew before that this, whatever Captain Scarlet represents is, but I think it's a UK thing. So, uh, because like, I think in the group, a lot of the UK people were really excited about it. And um, yeah, it looks kind of cool. So I will check it out. Definitely what uh, the series is about. And it's by Dan or Orgel, Orgel, I hope I pronounced it right. It's G Clay. And it's 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters, 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 and uh, each is available 200 times, an addition of 200. And um, those are, yeah, as I said, two separate prints. Obviously, we have um, the one we talked about, Captain Scarlet here, and then there's also um, like this half and half, Captain Scarlet and Captain Black. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting um, uh, what uh, what is what is behind this stuff and it's like a cool look. Um, I wonder from when it is, maybe six seventies, I'd say sixties. And um, yeah, so uh, also interested how that looked in person. And the Captain Scarlet series, as I said, Dan Orgel did that, and uh, really cool job. Did not know about Dan Orgel, but um, yeah, interesting too. Uh, get some more information and to know more about these artists. Yeah, and the next one is a uh, kind of co-release, but in a different way. We have um, this beautiful Laurent Durieux print, The Cotton Club. Uh, there's also been, I think, a Roy Kurtz version of The Cotton Club, if I remember correctly. It's also really cool. And um, yeah, but this one, The Cotton Club, is is uh, is a really cool print. Laurent Durieux always... 
uh, knocks it out of the park. I wonder if people have it in hand as, as it is kind of with the Simpod print I have here in the back that it's like has some special uh, print on it, like the, 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 the sparkly things that I showed in like some post, I think back uh, when it came out and when I, when I got it. And uh, yeah, as I said, this release is, uh, the, the regular version is released by Mondo and it's available only in the, uh, North America in that regard, I think you, you say in Canada. And it's 24 by 36 inch screen print with an edition of 250. And the co-release is with Nautilus Art Prints and they have the variant here. It's a little bit different. I think the variant is a little bit cooler in that regard because I think the colors work a little bit better, at least for me it does. And uh, it is only available in Europe or has been available, probably not available anymore. Um, and it had a hand numbered and signed edition, which is a difference to the US version because um, I think the Nautilus, Nautilus art prints, they are in France, I think. And uh, yeah, Laurent Durieux is basically around the corner. He's from Belgium. Um, so yeah, it's uh, same size and yeah, an, an edition of 134, which is like a weird number, but looks really cool. So um, also wanted to know if you have um, this kind of print or if you get both maybe with a um, poster buddy that helped you out there and uh, got you the set basically yeah it keeps on going with mondo i have that they have a new uh, some new t-shirts i talked about uh, the uh, the page reynolds t-shirt uh, for a big trouble in the chair which was really cool and they came up with some awesome new designs this first one is called jurassic tennis and it's uh, jurassic park related obviously it has the, the kind of the color scheme in a certain way going and it has here in the middle uh, the, the fence as an as a um, like for hitting it and then the of course the Jurassic Park Invitational it reminds us a lot or me definitely of the banner when it comes down with the T-Rex in the end 93 obviously and uh, I think even though this like the red and uh, green uh, here at the bottom is a reminder for the cars uh, even though it's not the same like the perfect uh, ma matching the perfect color tone, but it looks really awesome. It's by Leslie Herman. It is printed by Impact Merchandising. It's an on next level 100% black tee, and it's available in all sizes. Still available on Mondo, so check that out as well. And um, Leslie Herman did also another tee, which is the which is hard to see. Um, oh, oh, never mind. I'm sorry. It was the other one was the next level 3600 cream tea. This is the next level 100% black tea. And I think that's why you barely can see it. Uh, Women inherit the earth is uh, is that called? Uh, and it's a it's a reminder because of um, that because of all the dinosaurs dinosaurs they were female on the island. And I think that's the dig on right there. And the women, uh, the women. I'm sorry. The the front looks really cool. And we have even a better back, which has the Diphilopolisaurus or whatever its name is uh, on the back there. And I saw it uh, like in the, in the photos on, on, on Mondo's website, I think it was, and it showed like how, how it looks on a person and it looked really, really amazing. And uh, yeah, that's, I, think, I, I think I need to get this one. It looks really cool. Big Jurassic Park fan as well. And there's even one more, which is really cool. I like this one, uh, Mr. DNA. And Mr. DNA is from the from the explanation video from Jurassic Park, if you remember. And uh, yeah, this this is a really cool um, homage in that regard for this um, for his T-shirt. And the back has also uh, Brachiosaurus, like Brachiosaurus, on the back there. And it's by Bruce Yan or Yan. And uh, yeah, it's a next level 3600 Royal Blue T, also printed by Impact Merchandising. Yeah, now we come to some more posters that Mondo released. And this one here, the first one is the X-Men Children of the Atom. Really, really cool comic book. Really enjoyed reading that back in the day. And this one is by Michael Cho. And it's a five color screen print on Kugel Natural 100 pounds, I think, or whatever it's called. I don't, I don't know the, the term any there, but it's on Kugel Natural. It's 18 by 24 
an edition of 175 and yeah this is a this is a really cool looking print got the style i think uh, especially for like the the age where this kind of um comic book is from it captures it very well and uh yeah the x-men series went on for a couple more prints so check here in a second and the the next one is going to be by the great matt taylor we had some chance uh, talking to him about for his palm springs piece and this one looks just amazing I, I i don't know how he does it and i think it is on i it wasn't on today and i'm, I'm filming i'm filming this on a tuesday coming out on wednesday and it wasn't as a ap um sale yet but i think it's this week so um maybe at the end of the week check, check in if you have the chance to grab this awesome print this is the regular edition of 375 um a piece i don't know it's an eight color screen printed poster and um it just looks amazing and you can like flip it around have like the house of x here and or have the powers of x for the comic book really really great stuff but i even like more the uh, because of the colorways and uh, i like this more the variant edition of the same print also eight color screen print and it's an edition of 174 uh, and if i've met, if i haven't mentioned it 24 by 36 really 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 great print and all the details like um, i look at magneto here um, we have mystique and um yeah this is just amazing stuff i um i really want to get my hands on one of them because i missed out i had it in a checkout didn't get it so i might get lucky who knows we will see and uh, there's some more x-men as i promised uh, this beautiful piece by Mark Brooks. Didn't know uh, about Mark Brooks before. I think um, in the regards of uh, that he, I don't know if he's a, like, I think he's like, he, he, he does comics for a living. And this is a very nice piece. Um, when you look at the, uh, it's by Jonathan Hickman, the story, real, as I said, really like the story here and um, all like the character details and all like, the uh, the 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 comic uh, the, the comic book aspect of this is just amazing and the variant um i'm, I'm sorry the, the 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 regular edition is available for like or was available 175 times and it's a 36 by 24 six color screen printed on cougar natural and um the the variant here has the like the alphabet here the change alphabet which is like really really cool i like this one the variant in this case even though the print is all, like identical except the the writings there and this is an edition of 100 so um check that out maybe um i don't know if mark brooks has uh like an ap sale for it or whatever um but uh, stay tuned maybe to his instagram I, I put it down there check it out and you might get lucky to get also one of these and then there is a really crazy print. It's a Ghostbusters print by WBYK. We buy your kids. It's a short form um, for it. And they did um, last year, I remember they did a really great architectural piece by for the Frank Wright exhibition for uh, uh, Spoke Art. And yeah, this also is a really, really, really cool print. Um, the style is remarkable in that regard and you can like you notice right away who it is and it's 18 by 24 150 edition of 150 and yeah really really cool print really like this one and our next one i think you really enjoy that one i hope i didn't mix it up with the variant and uh, regular and this is the witcher uh three for the video game and it's by Becky Cloonan, who was mentioned also by Matt Taylor in the last Palm Springs podcast, uh, where he gets inspired when it comes to water by her style and what she does with it. And um, yeah, this Witcher, the Witcher 3 print, like the gaming series was really great. I really enjoyed playing those games and uh, Becky Cloonan did a really, really cool job. Um, I hope I have it in the right order here. This, I think this is the regular variant uh, available to, um, 175 times. 18 by 24 print and this one the, ver uh, the if that's the variant i hope so it's also 18 by 24 and an addition of 100. really cool with the colors the colors she used here but i think i like the black and white kind of version even better and yeah we're not done with Mon uh, mondo yet which we probably won't for uh the next one two three four five six seven eight prints i think and um, yeah, the next one is a Ken Taylor print 
for How to Train Your Dragon for the original movie, the first one, it's 36 by 24 inches. It's an edition of 225. Really cool idea with the colors and like the, the, the kind of like kind of color blocking, but um, the, the contrast of the colors is really interesting. And there's also the variant, as I just said, um, which fits even better, I think, in my opinion. I like this kind of like greenish with the, with the orange and um, having a little bit of red in there as well. Kept that for um, what's this toothless? For what's the name toothless? Yeah, and um, yeah, this the, the variant is available or was available 125 times. Also 36 by 24 and a screen print. Next one, uh, a lot of fans are probably really excited about. It is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The movie's coming out soon in September. I think September. 4th or 11th or something like that and uh, it's this this print is by Matt Ryan Tobin uh, and uh, or Tobin he did a really really cool job on that I really uh, like this one and uh, yeah Bill and Tad fun movie um, and it's I guess it's also a screen print but I think it didn't say on the on the website um, 24 by 36 inches an edition of 225 and yeah Matt Tobin captures this kind of spirit of the what the movie is about and uh I hope there's going to be some more like a trilogy set maybe for the second part and then um, especially for the third part which is coming out soon but uh, yeah we'll see what's in the cards for that and Matt, Matt Ryan please let us know if there's going to if there's going to be something. Yeah the next one is getting more and more attention. Attack Peter he's such a cool guy he has also the YouTube channel and um, yeah Go, go check out his YouTube channel as well. He does a lot of uh, cool videos on how he does his stuff because this is a lino cut print on locked up paper. He does the printing himself and uh, he also does like the obviously the lino cuts uh, himself. And this is uh, yeah, this is called Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla and uh, it's a 20 inch by 30 inch piece. It's an edition of 120, I think. And I think this one was like right away on eBay for tons of money. And uh, yeah. Crazy print, really like this one, or yeah, it's still, yeah, it's a print, and uh, really like how how he comes up with those designs, I mean, um, working with Linocut is like, I think different, like, it's definitely different, like, uh, working, than working on with digital art, but how he captures all, like, the little details on those, on those prints is just amazing, and like to come up with this idea. I, I remember I worked uh, in like in school, I think it was the eighth grade or something like that. We worked with uh, Lino Cut and uh, I think I did the N1 logo I had to, to do that. And uh, now seeing this, and I, th that was like the, the most fun for me, like creating this kind of stuff with the Lino Cut. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, if, if, I, if I knew about this, I would love to do like, the, or I had like back then, had the idea about it, I would love to do or try myself at least at doing something creative like this when it comes to like Linux cut. But well, it's been some time, so maybe some other art teachers will let their students do this kind of cool stuff. So check out Tech Peter and his cool Linux cut series. Uh, it is all like most of the time it's been released with Mondo, but he also has his own stuff and he has also a fan group on Facebook. Also join there if you are intrigued by this beautiful, beautiful art. And then, yeah, we just talked about uh, Matt Ryan Tobin, and uh, he has another print, which is Halo Infinite. It came out as well, uh, worth to a lot of fans as well, because there's a lot of Halo fans, and it's a 24 by 36 inch uh, print. It has uh, had an edition of 325. Looks really cool, not a big Halo fan here, but um, yeah, the print uh, does, it's, does work. The details are um, superb. And uh, the way it is put together, and uh, the colorway, the the green for also um, for Chief, is um, definitely the right choice here. Uh, love what Matt Ryan is doing with this stuff, and like with all the other posters. I mean, I have a Destroyer poster, which is just amazing. I don't know, a lot of people sleep on that. So yeah, Halo Infinite also looking very great. And then there's another one I got from the SCCC, which is the Martin Anson, the Ways of the Four Star Wars print. Looks amazing. Um, I didn't, I just grabbed the timed edition because I didn't get the foil edition, um, which I will show you now, uh, which must be amazing. I wonder how it looks like, how it looks in person or framed up. That's, um, that's what I'm really interested about. And uh, let me know if you have it at home, if you got the foil, foil edition. I would love to see it. 
Uh, yeah, the Ways of the Force, the, the regular edition was a timed edition, uh, 24 by 36 screen printed, and the foil screen print was an edition of 345. And then we almost through here. Um, we have some more peanuts prints for you. And uh, this is obviously by Charles Schultz. It's like taking this kind of panel out of the, the, the comic strip. And um, it's this one is the peanut, it's called Peanuts Art. Don't you realize that these drawings of mine are art? And <laughs> it's 18 by 18, edition of uh, 125. And yeah, for must have for the Peanuts fans, I hope Raid 71 uh, got his hands on them uh, because they were, I think they were only available in the States. And yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's also in this kind of like, kind of set, uh, whatever happened to summer. <laughs> That's what I think what a lot of people felt like with the COVID going on and not being able to enjoy the summer holidays that much. But uh, yeah, this is also uh, by Charles Schulz. Uh, Screen print of, uh, of uh, in a size of 24 times 18, edition of 125. Yes, and three more to go. We have this one here by Kent Williams. It's also Godzilla print, and uh, it's, a, it's a screen print, 36 by 24, edition of 225. And I think the other day when I looked at it, it still was available, but I'm not sure if it's on anymore. And um, yeah, it's an interesting uh, way of style. I didn't know about Kent Williams before, but it looks kind of cool, uh, like kind of like watercolory. And um, yeah, I uh, hope a lot of people are like, the, there are a lot of Godzilla fans out there. I hope you get it or you had a chance to get on that print and um, grab it up. And last, uh, no, 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 not the last, but uh, almost last here. Um, it's the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse print by Mike Saputo. And it's also screen print 36 by 24, an edition of 275. And yeah, there have been uh, tons of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse prints because it's such a great movie with so much cool artwork. And I think Mike Saputo did a really good job on this one. It looks really vibrant in color. I wonder how it looks in person. It must really pop, I think. And um, it has this kind of glitchy feel like the movie, like in the movie and... Uh, yeah, Mike Saputo, good job, man. Uh, did not know about you as well, but uh, your art is also really cool to look at. So check him out on Instagram as well. And our last but not least one is this cool piece for the thing. And uh, this is by 100% Soft. And they did a bunch of different pieces yet. And you have like all the details, the helicopter, the base, and like uh, the, the, the alien stuff, basically. And like all the characters here and different scenes that happen. So it's really cool, cool, cool stuff. And it's 36 by 24, I think I mentioned it. And it's an edition of 275. And this came out uh, for Mondo as well. And uh, it was like the, one of the latest releases they had on. And I hope you really enjoyed this one. I think the 100% the, the, the soft people, they, um, or person, they uh, do really cool artwork when you like this kind of uh, comic style reminds me a little bit in, in terms of like how um, kind of kid friendly it looks uh, of, of Scott C and so on this, in this regard as well shout out to Scott C always dropping good work that happened with his little tiny con and uh, didn't cover that but um, if there's going to be some more quiet time I will go back and check on those single um, Comic-Con releases by all the artists that did it themselves and not via a gallery. Okay, so uh, this is it, people. Thank you so much um, for sitting through this. I was talking a lot, almost half an hour. And uh, now it's time to get to talking with Oliver Barrett and about talking about his Dark Knight piece. And I think... This is definitely one of the very cool pieces and I think one of my favorite ones that came out during the SDCC and I can't wait what uh, Oliver Bird has in store and the other artists have, have in store for the New York Comic Con. I hope it's not going to be that much because the wallet is going to hurt and yeah, don't want to keep you and now over to Oliver Bird. Okay, now it's time that we stop with the releases and focus on the main show, which is going to be Oliver Barrett and his The Dark Knight piece. Oliver, how are you doing, man? I am fantastic. That's... Just finished lunch. <laughs> Feeling very satisfied, very relaxed. What was lunch? What did you have? 
we had breakfast for lunch. Breakfast for lunch. So we, had, we had sausage and eggs and oh, maybe a little bit of arugula on there. Yeah. Avocado toast. Yeah. I'm all, like a good millennial shit. <laughs> I'm also a very um, 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 breakfast for dinner person. That's, that's yeah. what I like to do. We might do that later today. Good. Do all three. Just breakfast every meal. Breakfast all day, every day. <laughs> All right. It's like the pizza rolls commercial. <laughs> Pizza's on a bagel. You can eat pizza anytime. Yeah. Oh, those commercials. That's one of the, the things I miss about the States as well. Um, because I used, uh, used to be an exchange student and close to Cleveland. That's what I uh, t told Oliver um, earlier. And uh, yeah, I miss those um, Charles Barkley five box box uh, commercials. I have them always in my head. Barkley commercial. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. I think it was Taco Bell, right? The five box box? I don't know. I don't remember it, but I got to look it up now because I love everything Charles Barkley. Yeah, they had a song. It was like super catchy. And I remembered from like watching basketball, like the, the, the NBA games on the game time. And uh, yeah, when they used to have still the commercials in there. So I was like a little. It's slowly coming back to me. <laughs> but I always get it confused with like the, the Jordan McDonald's commercials. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah. Actually, those are, I think those were Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. I think I got it wrong. Yeah. Someone's going to get in the comments and be like, you got that they wrong. They better. Or we, so. we, we, can, we can put it, we can set it straight later. Like afterwards, yeah. get it right. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I want to talk to you about your beautiful art. As I said, The Dark Knight, um, you came out with that beautiful poster for Mondo. It's a 24 by um, 36. And an addition of how many was it? Do you know? I think the regular had 250 and the variant had 175. Mm. Pretty sure. Not 100% sure, but yeah. Yeah, and they're, Pretty low. they're both great pieces of art. And um, how was the contact? Did you contact Mondo? Did Mondo con contact, you, contact you to do that? Or how was it? This was the first and only time I've... Um, pitch something to Mondo and then it actually became a print. Usually sometimes I'll pitch something and they don't have the license for it. Or it might get assigned down the road, but this was like the timing sort of worked out. I had this idea and it was a bit weird and goofy. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to scribble it up in Photoshop real quick. I don't really care how it looks as long as it gets point across and send it over and see what they say. And they're like, sure, we'd love to do that. And it was, what two summers ago three summers ago it was like right before the the 10 year anniversary of the film mm -hmm. and i didn't know if they were doing anything for it and i was like oh man that would be a pretty pretty smart thing to do to line it up with that and obviously it didn't happen because it came out what a couple of weeks last week yeah <laughs> as the poster drop two years later yeah. um so yeah it took me a couple of years to get to the finish line on that one but i'm glad that it's finally out there and out of my head and not hanging over me because you know how those things go if you say you're going to do something that you don't get around to doing it it sort of eats at you slowly over time yep i know the feeling <laughs> but yeah um you gave me some work in progress um steps let's let's call them steps um can, can you walk us and me through them how how did you approach this whole thing sure this particular project I'd say it was not a great example of how I usually like to work, prefer to work. Like I mentioned, it was it was a pitch. Mm -hmm. So normally, if someone approaches me for a project, I'll come up with at least like you know two or three thumbnail sketches, really rough, just to get an idea of composition mm -hmm. across. And then we'll pick one or two and turn them into tighter sketches from there, and then pick one and then take that to a rendered final. But this was like, okay, I got this one idea. It's only going to work like this. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of opened up Photoshop and sort of eyeballed it out of my head, looking at the the Nolan vs. Batman logo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it worked. Uh, the face looks weird as hell, but it's a sketch, so that's okay. Um, but then they had also, they being Mondo, they, had, they were working on the Marvel Cinematic Universe 10-year anniversary show, which they commissioned me to do civil war for that mm -hmm. right, right around the same time. So it was like, okay, I have an actual assignment, <laughs> which they need me to do. And then I have this other thing that I would like to do. And since I've never pitched anything before, it was like, okay, I really want to make sure that I do a good job with this. 
while also delivering on a thing that they asked for at the same time. And it eventually became too much for me to handle in like a month and a half. Yeah. So I ended up putting it on hold while I worked on all the Marvel stuff. If you've seen that poster, yeah, it's a shit ton of drawing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't know what I was. Thinking. I'm gonna spoil it a little bit because uh, we're gonna talk in your inter long interview. We're gonna talk about that poster. <laughs> okay, I got some things to say about it. Great, so I'm looking forward. <laughs> So um, yeah, so th there's a, there's um, the, this one sketch. Um, I I just put it in. I think it is the the one where you where it's just the just with the with the scale I think in the back, and also the, the where the Joker looks a little different. I think he looks more like the Cesar Moreno Joker. <laughs> well, what's up with that? Uh... <laughs> This like the poster is a perfect example of what you don't want to do when you're trying to do something like this, where you've got an idea and you're like, okay, I'll just figure it out as I go. Sometimes it works. Yeah. In this case, it was me drawing a dude that was falling off of a building and his coat needs to flap in the wind a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I have to nail a likeness and have it all look believable. Yeah. Mind you, Heath Ledger passed away, there's, so there's not a ton of reference material for, for yeah. him. Um, also, there's no shot in the film that's like this where someone's falling on the screen, so I had to figure it out. And in the sketch, it's just eyeballed. But like it, it's enough to get the idea across. But in that in that image that you're talking about, I was like, okay, because because he's not around, and a lot of alternative posters use the same sort of um, press photo, promo photo sort of reference. I'm like, I want to do something else that you're not going to be able to find on the first page of Google image search when you look for yeah. it. So I was just drawing Heath Ledger and then I was going to put the makeup on him. So I had this image of him laughing and it just looks really, really goofy. And I had done it like three or four times because it just never looked right. So I didn't need to send you all three of them, but I'd send you one <laughs> yeah. of them and it's, it's embarrassing enough. So it's okay. I'll get it out there. Um, but yeah, I had to scrap that a couple of different times and really, really scale it back and analyze, okay, how do I get this to work? And I had, you know, bought a couple of drawing references, looked up dudes jumping out of planes and stuff like that yeah. to get the to get it right. <laughs> and it took a lot of trial and error to get it right. Yeah. I mean I mean part of the reason it took two years to get it out. It it looks definitely right to me and um yeah, but but is is this the one I'm talking about the, the where he's uh, falling there? And is is it is it Cesar Moreno because his face looks so different? Or who is that person? No, it's just it it's still him. It's still Ledger. It's still Heath Ledger. Okay. It just it it's just rough. Oh, okay. Real rough. Yeah, I, I I also if you're talking about the one with the face paint on, that's the that's that was the pitch sketch. Okay. Yeah. No. No. The, Where it's enough to be like. Yeah. The, this is the the the, the pitch sketch one is. Um, yeah. You could definitely tell, but I think on uh, I think it was the second one you sent me. The the uh, and um, yeah. the, the, there he looks like because I was like I thought oh did did he just do that because like Cesar Moreno's Joker fall down <laughs> at some point in the in the old Batman series or <laughs> why did he do no. that? <laughs> I mean it's it's a funny reference to, just... to look at it that way. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're trying to do something like this, the goal is not to be funny; yeah. it's to be a, a of fact. course not. <laughs> and that wasn't that wasn't getting it done. Yeah. And again, like I was working on another poster at the time, so it was like, man, I'm just, you know, banging my head against the wall trying to get this right. Meanwhile, I'm falling behind on the actual real work that I have to do. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. I got to press pause here for a while, and that actually helped because when I came back to it. You know, a couple of months later, it was like, I'm not even going to bother trying to salvage this. You know, I wasted maybe an afternoon trying to move something around or change the light source a little bit or move a couple of lines on his face around. It still wasn't. Just, yeah. It was just better to just scrap the whole thing and start okay. over. <laughs> and um, so there was a positive in taking a break. Okay. Um, how how was it for you uh, when you look at the variant? Where did you make um, the decision to include? Basically, it's just I think I would say it's just a subtle a subtle background you have there. There's just the debris and stuff, and that's it. And the idea came from working on it and not having that building in the background for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It just sort of became attached to not having a background, and when it came to like 
actually drawing that that piece of the building in the background from the sketch it, I had to convince myself to do it it was like one of those situations where I thought the drawing was done mm -hmm. I liked the way it looked but looking back at the pitch I was like there's still something that's not not there and it was that building and I really struggle with architecture so it was one of the okay. situations where I was putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and I had almost convinced myself that the variant with no background was going to be the the poster and I uh, just sort of sat down and powered through it and figured out how to get it done mm. and then trying to think of another option for the variant I was like oh let's just do go with the no background thing okay and originally there was like a small line of well originally there was a credit block yeah that got next okay then there was some a, a row of logos, like the film's logos, and it was lined up with the title. Yeah. So it created this sort of implied horizontal line, uh -huh. which worked pretty well in the composition. It worked better on the variant because when you tilt that the title diagonally, mm -hmm. it created another line coming off the Joker. So it created a different sort of eye flow where you're coming in from the corner where those logos would have been yeah. into the title, into the corner of the, the coat, and then through his face mm -hmm. um what what um because you can see like slightly in the background there are some like ellipses or circles or whatever what, what is that all about that's the like that's a subtle reference to the cable that comes down and grabs ah, it. okay mm -hmm. interesting yeah when you actually get the poster it'll be a little bit clear unless you're zooming in on the image but the the yeah, hook I see. itself is it's there. over the yeah, R from Dark Knight. The... I just I just showed to the to yeah, other people I just, what it is. I didn't want to get it to compete with the logo, so I had to knock it back. Yeah. I think yeah, I mean uh, it's it's a great print and both versions I really enjoyed. And um did did you do the architecture like like hand drawing or did you do like Blender or something and like make it easy on you? I had a stock photo that sort of worked and I spent a while trying to fake mm -hmm. it and use like Photoshop filters and shit like that to sort of do the work for me. And every time I tried, I would catch myself looking at the clock and being like, I wasted two hours on this bullshit. It still <laughs> looks horrible. So I got out a ruler and I did it the way you're supposed to do it. And I hated every second of it, <laughs> but it was worth it. Okay. So no architect. I, I, no, I, I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I always struggled with that stuff. It's something about, like, the the fine motor skills of one-point perspective. <laughs> okay. Couldn't nail it. I totally understand. Um, how about I, APs? Are there going to be APs out? Artist proofs. Oh, I sold them already. You sold them? Oh, they, they were already on sale? Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, I did them the next day. Oh, yeah, I was, I, I, I was trying to... I, I was trying to take advantage of like the Comic Con aspect of it and be like, well, if I had a booth, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. These would have been there. Yeah, I was, I was wondering. And they went quick. Because yeah, I, I thought it was, um, I thought it was something else. Because in that week there was so much going on. It was like crazy. Those, yeah. those, those two weeks, even the one before where Bottleneck had so much stuff going on, and then the next week Mondo had so much stuff going on, and on top of that, some other stuff as well. It was a crazy two weeks. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit awkward because for me, I had spent so long on the poster, and it was like, okay, it's doing really well with being a part of Comic Con. Mm. I usually wait a little while to do APs, at least a couple of at least a couple of days, yeah. sometimes a couple of months. <laughs> but I found like the the longer I wait, the the worse it gets for me. Yeah, okay. So in this case, it was okay. There's never going to be more hype on this image than there is, than there is right now. Yeah. There's no reason not to just put them up because they're because they're not going to ship until September anyway because they're still being printed. Mm -hmm. So if the if the real if Mondo's a part of it is a pre-order, there's no reason that mine can't be as well. Because yeah. I've I've waited I, that situations happened before, where I think even Swiss Army Man did that where they had sold the poster and then the prints didn't come for months and i had waited until like my prints showed up to put them up mm -hmm. and by that time i think most people had just completely forgotten about the movie yeah okay which is because i love yeah it. it's a great movie i loved it as well yeah that's that's a good one yeah so i was just trying to protect my investment of time sure, and just I understand. capitalize on the hype okay and uh, speaking of hype um what is your movie review of the of the dark knight 
what did you like what didn't you like and what, how would you rate the movie from zero to ten i think you got to look at it through two different lenses there's the 2020 lens where you can watch it now and be like this is a cool superhero movie the beginning of it it's like heat that's really fun mm -hmm. the villain's cool batman talks really weird <laughs> um the shit with the sonar is really weird it sort of just falls apart in the third act um but it's it's a pretty watchable fun superhero movie but if you look at it through the lens of when it came out there wasn't anything like that there wasn't like the dark and gritty take on x and y character mm. which is that like i remember the first teaser image that came out of the joker and having it look nothing like tim burton's jack nicholson joker and being like holy shit what is this about <laughs> And I was just I was just graduating from college at the time, and I was transitioning from working part time at an agency to working full time at an agency, and I would kill a lot of time there, looking on forums for like production stills mm -hmm. and all sorts of teasers, like leak leak trailers and stuff like that. Because remember, this was like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, so it wasn't like you could just pull it up on YouTube. Yeah, you had to you had to actually work for it, and I put in the time to try to find whatever I could find. There wasn't a whole lot, but I remember I even, I made it a point to go watch I Am Legend in the theater because it had the first, I don't know, like I think it had that opening scene yeah. from the from the Dark Knight, the bank heist. I think it was in the beginning of okay. it. Okay. Yeah, this, sadly they don't do that Which, here in Germany, so we never have that experience. Oh, it was just a, a level of hype that I haven't really experienced since. Like, maybe, maybe, Maybe Infinity War would have been the same thing, but even by then I was tired of superhero movies. I was like, okay, they've been working on this thing for 10 years. You got to go see it. Mm. At this point, I was like, oh man, I just want to see this crazy villain thing. I want to see what they do with it. And then I remember it came out. I bought tickets ahead of time, which I don't do. <laughs> I mistakenly bought tickets for the wrong theater because it was from a, it was a theater chain. Yeah. And I wasn't paying attention because I was so, I was so stoked about it. And we drove there, and I walk up to the usher, and he's like, "Your tickets are for the, the one that's you know south of here, 20, 20 miles south or whatever, oh, whatever it was. It wasn't that far. It was far enough though. I mean, we we drove like seventy five on the highway for about fifteen minutes. Got there right when the the show started." Mm -hmm. Thankfully, there were assigned seats. Otherwise, I would have broken my neck just staring yeah. straight up. I just wanted to ask if there, if there were assigned seats. No, that that was the only fortunate thing about that whole experience, aside from the movie itself. But I remember being blown away and being bummed that he had passed away, or that Heath Ledger had passed yeah. away, because that probably would have changed what happened in the third film. But what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, it's, it's two, different, two different lenses, because if... I were to see that for the first time now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it the same way. And I sort of approached the poster the same way mm -hmm. where I was working on it with, you know, my skill level at 35 and 2020 with the same mentality of me coming out of school at, you know, 22 and mm -hmm. 2008 and being really excited about it. So like keeping that same energy, made it easy for me to keep coming back to the poster whenever I hit a roadblock with it. Yeah. Because in a lot of ways, because it was a pitch, I could have pulled the plug and just be like, you know, this just doesn't work. Sorry, dudes. And they would have been like, oh, that's us, whatever. Yeah. But because I had such an attachment to this thing from 12 years ago, it really made it, like it kept it fun for me, even though it was incredibly challenging. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. So uh, could you rate it or is it not too, too hard? Or is it too hard to rate if I'm rating it this year, I'd probably put it at like a three and a half out of five, four out of five sort of thing. Okay, okay. And back. And if I'm rating it when it came out, it was you know, it's a masterpiece. Five it was out like of five. The coolest, it was like the, cool, the coolest shit ever. Um, yeah, because back then, like that was that was the best superhero yeah. movie. I still think it is the best superhero movie. But I looked at it. I looked at it as just a movie. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I mean, I f that's that's how I feel right now about Tenet because uh, I really want to see Tenet, and uh, this is this is my uh, the Dark Knight for this year, definitely. <laughs> sure. I, also, with that, it's weird because they keep talking about it, you know, coming out no matter what, and then you see people on Twitter like laughing about people saying that, and it's like, why are you, why are you laughing about this? Like, this sucks. Yeah. Like, it's not fun to it's not fun to poke fun at someone else like trying to put this thing out. Yeah, of course it's in poor taste trying to get a movie out in the theater in the current landscape mm -hmm. of things, but I don't know. Yeah, but it, there's a lot of goes into these things. I just think a lot of people don't take that into consideration. Yeah, I, th I just think, um, especially when it comes to Europe and Germany in particular, is that uh, I think the it's uh, not safer is maybe a wrong word, but I think the situation is a little bit different than in the States. And they just, they, I think the other day, they just set the date for Tenet and everybody's like promoting it right now that it's uh, going to be watchable on August 26th. So I have a chance to see it soon. <laughs> Good for me, I guess. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> but yeah, um, so much for that. Thank you again for uh, coming on the show and talking about this new uh, The Dark Knight print. And sadly, nobody can get a piece more uh, anymore, but check the aftermarket people. There's going to be a chance to get maybe a, or a score. It's still it's still a while before those things are going to ship, so you never know. I might get some extra, some might get damaged, someone might cancel. Yeah. You never know. Let's finger, we'll fingers see. crossed on that. And uh, yeah, people, check check out um, Oliver Barrett on Instagram, on Twitter, on everywhere. Uh, great artist, great work on the Dark Knight, Oliver. And thanks again for stopping by, man. Bye, guys. Thanks for helping me. Bye.